hearty welcome to one and all to the national conference on emerging trends in applied mathematics etam december 16 to 18 2020 organized by pg and research department of mathematics with iqac of st thomas college autonomous trishu let us start the inaugural ceremony invoking the blessings of the lord almighty let us kindly be silent for a moment in prayer sada shanti te do sada ananta roopa sada jyoti de do jyoti swarupa jyoti swarupa sada shanti te do sada ananta roopa सदा ज्योति दे दो ज्योति स्वरूपा ज्योति स्वरूपा दिल के मंदिर में दीप तू हे मन की तड़ाग में पंकज तू हे दिल के मंदिर में दीप तू है मन की तड़ाग में पंकज तू है पंकज तू है सदा शांति दे दो सदा नंद रूपा सदा ज्योति दे दो ज्योति स्वरूपा ज्योति स्वरूपा नाउ इट इज टाइम टू वेलकम ऑल टू द नेशनल वर्चुअल कॉन्फ्रेंस इमर्जिंग ट्रेंड्स इन अप्लाइड मैथमेटिक्स लेट एस Let us start the conference with a welcome note from our HOD, Dr. Sanju M. I. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone, distinguished guests, manager, principal, vice principals, deans, HODs, faculties of other college, our college, business college, and my dear students. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the. Three days uh, national vertical uh, sorry virtual conference from 16th December 2020 to 18th December 2020 for the topic emerging trends in applied mathematics. In the first day of this seminar, that is today, there is a talk on the topic graph theory and epidemiology by Rabin Dr. Joseph Vargas. Tomorrow. there will be a talk on the topic and introduction to fuzzy set theory by dr paul lise and the day after tomorrow there will be a talk on surface decamination a mathematical model by dr satyananda pandey first of all i have to welcome our manager ma tony nilangal we are indeed grateful for your gracious presence on behalf of department of mathematics and all present in the webinar i would like to extend a warm welcome to our manager ma tony nilangavil oxley bishop of thrissur diocese next we have our beloved principal dr joy k who always extends his support and help in all the activities of our department i would like to extend a warm welcome to our principal dr k l joy sir today's chief guest dr s p anjali devi former professor of professor and head department of applied mathematics bardia university coimbatore under her guidance many students secured their phd our program convener dr sister julia andrews is one among them 
on behalf of all present here i welcome dr s p r anjali devi to this program today's resource person lavan dr joseph vargis karetra director of research christ university bangalore he will talk on the topic graph theory and epidemiology you know that this topic is very relevant in the present syllabus i would like to extend a warm welcome to raval dr joseph vargis also i welcome other resource persons dr paul isaac head department of mathematics bardamada college trikakara and dr satyananda pandey head department of mathematics nit calcutt to this webinar i feel grateful to welcome our vice principals dr father martin columbus dr joby thomas dr sister alfonso matthew iqc coordinator dr father anil kongoth dean of science dr bitto joseph dean of arts dr salaraj who are a great guidance for our department i would also like to welcome the faculty members of our college and other colleges who constantly support us and believe in us let me welcome program convener dr sister julia andrews and teachers for the technical sides dr johns nadwat mr ranjit vargis and the colleagues of my department who take constant efforts for the development and learning of the students i welcome our dear students this is colleagues who are all set to make this event a remarkable one once again welcome you all to this virtual conference thank you thank you sir for your welcome note here we note that every program has a beginning and end just as human life our manager his excellency ma tony nilangavil auxiliary bishop of trishur is with us for delivering the inaugural address welcome bishop good afternoon to all dr joy kl our beloved principal st thomas college autonomous dr saju mi head of the department research department of mathematics respected professor dr sp anjali devi keynote speaker of the day reverend dr joseph vargis puritra is the speaker of today's main presentation and the scholars who are going to present uh, their research before us tomorrow and day after tomorrow dr paul isaac and dr satyananda pandey dear vice principals faculty members and dear participants of this national webinar on emerging trends in applied mathematics i am very happy to know that the research department of st thomas college organizes a seminar a national webinar on this particular topic emerging trends in applied mathematics a college which is more than a century old and a department which is more than a half a century old now they are not only interested in what has happened in the past i'm very happy to see that you are very much exploring the emerging trends today emerging trends speaks about what is happening today in view of the future emerging emerging today but then emerging these trends are to change the life of uh, the entire humanity life of the people at large or the world at large so i'm sure you will be very much opening up new horizons 
in the field of mathematics. I'm not a person to talk to you about mathematics because it's not my field. I am more in the field of theology. But when I heard uh, Dr. Sister Julie Andrews sang a beautiful prayer song, you know, I was reminded of a great mathematician and a philosopher whom we studied in our philosophy days of the 17th century, Leibniz. I, what I remember from my school days in philosophy is that he once said that even music, a, a good music has got mathematics. You can translate into mathematics, it seems. Since I'm not a mathematician, I leave that task to you all. But at least that reminds me that mathematics, unlike what I thought in my school days when I studied mathematics, I thought it's mere, uh, you know, numbers. Mathematics has got implications in all other sciences and uh, very much so also in music. And in uh, Leibniz is also a theologian philosopher. So I've seen him, uh, he speaks about the ultimate reality, I would say that with a mathematical clarity. So mathematics can help you, help any discipline uh, to improve your skill for analysis, logical uh, credibility, and also to find out, you know, to explore new ways. And uh, I'm sure you are more interested in many other topics currently uh, very much relevant in the field of exact sciences. And uh, uh, again, I remember Thomas Aquinas, the famous philosopher, theologian, and the father of scholastic thinking. He says mathematics is a fundamental science. Why he calls mathematics a fundamental science? Because he says that uh, many other exact sciences, even exact sciences, not only social sciences, many other exact sciences depend on mathematics. And uh, if I remember correctly, the example he provides there is optics. Optics depends on mathematics. Uh, optics is founded on mathematics. So we have got, uh, I'm sure faculty members, John is there from the field of physics and so on. They all are in fact depending on mathematics. So we are uh, entering into or at least now I am in a world I am aware that is very much foundational to knowledge. And in that sense, I really congratulate the Department of Mathematics in Thomas College Autonomous for organizing such a wonderful uh, seminar. And I'm also happy as a manager that you are not satisfied with the PhD you have already acquired. Now, uh, like Sister Julie Andrews, I'm sure uh, Anjali Madam must be very happy to see that her student still continues to do research. And I think that is the task uh, that should be the way our faculty should develop. And uh, uh, our faculty of mathematics, Department of Mathematics, is very much into that. And I congratulate the head of the department, all the faculty members, especially Dr. Julie Andrews, uh, for organizing such a seminar. I also wish you all the best for a very fruitful, wonderful seminar. I see uh, Dr. Joby Thomas also today's speaker. I didn't address him. Also, Dr. Joby, uh, Dr. Joby is coordinating all our research programs in the fact in the autumn, in our college. So, all the best to each and every one of you for a very fruitful webinar 
on this very relevant topic. And with these words, with your permission, I inaugurate, I declare this conference inaugurated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pidave, for the inaugural address and the nice words of appreciation for us. Now it is time for the presidential address by Dr. Joy Kayer, the principal of St. Thomas College, Autonomous Trishur. Kindly, sir. Hey, good afternoon to all. Your Excellency, dear Ma manager, Martoni Nilangavi, Dr. S.P. Anjali Devi, Dr. Joby Thomas, Vice Principal and uh, Coordinator of Research Council. Dr. Saju M.I., Head of the Department of Mathematics. Dear colleagues, research scholars and dear students. It gives a great pleasure to take part in this national webinar on emerging trends in mathematics conducted by the Research Department of Mathematics of our college. In this changed atmosphere, Webinars like this contribute very much to the pursuit of newer understanding and assimilation resulting of it, thereby acquiring a proud position in knowledge. As we have known generally, learning mathematics contributes to personal diligence and proper comprehension. Let these academic sessions enlighten our intellectual endeavors and widen the scope of speculations. May I wish all the participants an academic and scholastic advancement through these enlightening sessions. Let me extend sincere gratitude and warm welcome to the guest of the day, Dr. S.P. Anjali Devi from Bardia University, Coimbatore, Reverend Dr. Joseph Korinthra, Director of Research, Christ University, Bangalore, Dr. Paul Isaac from Bardamada College, Trikakara, and Dr. Satyananda Panda from NIT Koriko. Let me make use of this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Saju M.I., Head of the Department of Mathematics, convener Dr. Sister Julie Andrews, faculty members for organizing a three-day national webinar on emerging trends in applied mathematics. Wishing all of you all the best. I remain. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for the presidential address. Thank you, sir, a lot because uh, sir is a person who is always with us, leading us to excellence, spending his valuable time. Thank you, sir. Now it is time for keynote address. I am so happy to welcome Dr. S. P. Anjali Devi, ma'am, to deliver the keynote address. So, former professor and head of the Department of Applied Mathematics, Bhardia University, Coimbatore. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. Respected and distinguished dignitaries on the dais, faculty members from and outside St. Joseph's College, St. Thomas College, and uh, delegates and distinguished other members and my dear student friends. It really gives me immense pressure to deliver keynote address for this national webinar on emerging trends in applied mathematics conducted by St. Thomas College. First of all, I take this opportunity to thank my beloved student, Dr. Sister Julia Andrus, for giving me this wonderful privilege. Now, well, it is high time for me to come to the topic. Actually, Sister Julia Andres has asked me to give the very briefly about the keynote address. Lot of information are available, but because she wanted me to tell in very short, a very brief keynote address I am going to give. What are the emerging trends in applied mathematics? Now, all of you know, Mathematics is ancient, venerable, venerable awe-inspiring, and extremely useful. And applied mathematics is a special way of thinking and their attitude to bring out the applications in way of life. Now, when you are going to apply all these concepts of applied mathematics, then they become actually, they are the emerging trends nowadays. 
Now, I want to give an example, illustrative example for that so that you'll be able to understand. We solved the national problem. You actually, even, even our president, APJ Abdul Kalam, appreciated me. So, with the concept of applied mathematics, we have solved the national problem, in, which is involving space dynamics. So, now, what are the concepts we have used there? I am an expert in fluid dynamics. Using the concept of fundamental concepts of fluid dynamics and also the concept of CFD and aerodynamics concepts, we have solved that national problem. What was that problem? See, all of us know what is the drag and also what is the heat flux on any body. Now, even when I was a teacher, I was uh, I used to tell the students the drag force exerted on two type of bodies. Say, when you are taking a blunt body like this, and also when you are taking a sharp body like this, where the heat flux will be more will be, and also drag will be more will be on this. That is on the blunt body, and the on the sharp body it will be very less. Now, all these things are applicable only up to subsonic and uh, the supersonic flow. When you are going to hypersonic flow problem, it the concept phase. But even this idea was very clear to me even when, that is only when I did the national problem solution and also when I took up the DRDL project. What is this hypersonic flow? Now, when you are going to have the flow speed of the object or the fluid, with respect to the flow speed of the sound, then that ratio we call it as the ratio between the speed velocity of the flow to the speed of sound. We call it as a Mach number, which is a non-dimensional number. Now, when this Mach number is going to be greater than 5, then such a flow we are going to call it as a hypersonic flow. So, in the hypersonic flow, when you are dealing with the hypersonic flow problem, as I was telling you, Sister, I think she lost his internet connection. Okay, we will move to the felicitation and then uh, afterwards. Okay, okay, okay. Can... Sorry for the interruption. Let us move to the felicitation address by Dr. Joby Thomas K, Vice Principal and Research Council Coordinator of St. Thomas College Autonomous Trishur. Over to you, sir. Okay, good afternoon to all. Respected His Excellency Mark Tony Nilangavil, Auxiliary Bishop of Trishwar, the, the manager of the college, Dr. Joy Kale, the principal, the chief guest of the day, Professor Dr. S.P. Anjali Devi from Dr. Joseph Vargis, Dr. Paul Isaac. The convener of this national seminar on emerging trends in applied, Dr. Sister Julie Andrews, head of the department, Dr. Saju M., vice principal, Dr. Alfon, Sister Alfonsa Matthew, the dear delegates. My dear science students, at the outset, let me thank the Department of Mathematics at St. Thomas for inviting me to uh, this national seminar. We are really privileged by having another 
webinar on a very run topic emerging trends in applied mathematics organized by the mathematics at this college i am a chemistry faculty doing research both in the experimental chemistry field as well as theoretical chemistry field when we especially to the theoretical chemistry field we are really in trouble due to the lack of thorough knowledge on applied mathematics how did you bit knowledge about the fundamentals or basics of concepts of mathematics but the lack in the applied mathematics area makes a lot of trouble in our research that not only in chemistry not only in science area but in social science area or uh, humanities or arts and uh, uh, commerce area also the basics of mathematics is quite essential in the research without mathematics there is no research average science researchers medical researchers are approaching our mathematics department department continuously for discussion we are having consultancy in that area mathematics and statistics faculty are extensively rendering their service to the researchers helping to solve many problems how to compute how to derive some data uh, derivation in that sense getting new uh, knowledge on new horizons of applied mathematics is quite essential on us i congratulate the department especially the head of the department dr saju mi as well as the convener dr sr julie andrews for organizing this three days national a very eminent professor professor dr s p janjiri as the keynote speaker also the guide of our colleague although he have uh, she had some problem in the voice she will be joining very soon she is an expert in this area especially in the fluid dynamics i think sister julia andrews is mainly doing research in this area of fluid dynamics when we go to the research advisory committee meetings we are hearing all about this uh, things real analysis fluid dynamics and all these things our research uh, department uh, having three research guides dr sister alfonso dr sister julia andrews and vg therefore uh, uh, i once of all once again i uh, congratulate this department and uh, wish all the participants a uh, very good sessions three days sessions and i hope you will be get benefited much from national seminar thank you thank you one and all thank you jobi sir for the felicitations i hope uh, now dr sp anjali devi ma'am is online to continue the keynote address over to you ma'am she again lost her internet connection there is some technical problems it seems uh, so we are proceeding for the official vote of thanks
Gratitude is the best attitude. Honorary dignitaries on and off the dais. Dear participants and my dear friends. Thanking God Almighty for conducting this conference. Let me go to the duty. We had a need, and indeed, he is our manager. Thank you, dear Bishop, our dear manager, for inaugurating this national conference on emerging trends in mathematics. Next, I would like to thank our dear principal, Dr. Joy Kale, sir, who is with us always throughout the ups and downs of life, and in Max, Dr. Joey Sir is with us. Thanks a lot for your presidential address, sir. Dear loving ma'am, Dr. S.P. Anjali Devi, ma'am, my dear guide, it was a joy to listen to you, ma'am, after a long time. Thanks a lot to be with us, delivering the keynote address, and to be a part of the National Virtual Conference in Emerging Trends on Applied Mathematics conducted in our college. Thank you, ma'am, from the bosom of our hearts. Now let me take time to thank three invited speakers of this conference. First of all, I would like to thank Reverend Dr. Father Joseph Vagis Kuritra, who is the Director of Research in Christ University, Bangalore. Also, Dr. Paul Isaac, sir, who is with us always on and off the screen, who would be delivering tomorrow's talk and leading the paper presentation sessions. And Dr. Satyanath Pante, sir, from NIT, Calicut, to be a part of conference. I would like to thank all the noted speakers of the day on behalf of the organizing committee and all our department and all St. Thomas College to sure. I'm so happy to thank our three vice principals, especially Dr. Joby Thomas K, who was delivering the felicitations for us, and for Reverend Dr. Martin Colombret from English department, and Dr. Sister Alfonso Matthew from our own mathematics department. Let me take this opportunity to thank IQSE coordinator, Reverend Dr. Father Anil Konkot, Dr. John Snedworth and his team for technical supports, and the deans of science and arts, the controller of examinations, Dr. Paulson Matthew, sir, all the HODs of our different, diff different departments, and especially science streams, and all the faculty members and my dear friends who are present for this program. A special note of thanks for all the well-wishers of us whom we have personally invited for this program, including our mother provincials, educational counselors, and father provincials, and different team members. I would like to thank all the faculty and non-teaching staff of our college especially, and those who provided technical support, our own department assistant professors, Ranjit Verghese and Sabu Ayers, who is concerned about the paper presentation sessions and the technical sites. Now, let me take this opportunity to thank all those who have made this program a success. Thank you for spending your valuable time and energy for this program. Especially, I would like to thank all the paper presenters from different streams, including PG students, MPhil scholars, research scholars in our departments and in different departments and in different colleges. Thanks a lot for your active paper presentation sessions to come. 
Now it is time to thank all my dear faculty members who has worked as a team to make this day. Thank you one and all of you from the bosom of my heart. In this program as a convener, I would like to thank all of my dear teachers who has made me possible to convene a national virtual conference on emerging trends in applied mathematics from my LKG teacher to my PhD guide. We learn each day different things of life and mathematics too. So thanking one and all of you, all the dear participants who is making this conference and my dear students from my heart, let me remain. Thank you one and all. Now, the official inaugural ceremony is coming to an end. If possible, we will just listen to Dr. S.P. Anjali Devi, ma'am, if ma'am can continue. Please, ma'am. Sorry, Hello, there was ma an yeah. OK. If possible, we will continue with the keynote address. Yeah, yeah. OK, okay ma'am. Uh, sorry, sister, because I'm staying in a hotel, no? So internet connection uh, they got disconnected. That was the problem. Sorry. Sorry for the interruption. And I was explaining about the drag reduction. And uh, in the hypersonic flow problem, in the drag reduction was very low. In the case of hypersonic, uh, that is the case of blunt body thing. And that is the thing we realized. And we are doing the mathematical modeling and we are asked to do the modeling for the construction of hypersonic technology demonstrated vehicle. And instead of 13 crores investment, only 13 lakhs we were able to do with the mathematical modeling with this wonder and they were greatly appreciated. And uh, as I told you, the emerging trends in applied mathematics are not just learning the concept of applied mathematics, but just applying now for the concept of light problems and also world level problems. Now, in the COVID-19, there is a problem. Now, this in this present situation of COVID-19, even the spread of epidemics with the mathematical theory we can apply. And also, when you are going to calculate the mist formation and also air pollution in Delhi, they are using the operation research concepts and also air pollution modeling with the idea of applied mathematics. So, and even the concept of solving the national problems or utilizing the concept of applied mathematical ideas so, such as monsoon problems, storm size prediction, national pro that is physiological fluid dynamics, air pollution modeling, water pollution modeling and all these pollution solutions are obtained with the idea of concepts of applied mathematics. Now you will enjoy, the students will be able to enjoy and they will be able to feel happy when they know that the concept of applied mathematics is even used even to fly a flight. Say even without a pilot, your yeah, yeah, airplane can fly when you are able to speed the speed and position of all those things to a device called Callman Busy Filter, then the airplane uh, is going to fly without a pilot. So not only this, a lot of very good concepts are there available to solve all our problems for existing life problems. Recently when I had been to Malaysia, they were asking us to join in a world level modeling for the prevention of heart attack see when we are having heart attack all the people are going for operations and it's very expensive and they suffer a lot but before six months of heart, heart attack they are able to predict with the mathematical modeling that is they are going to get the heart attack so like that these type of modeling with the mathematical ideas they are very much helpful to the people and uh, you are having a uh, painting, Ravi Verma painting and their duplicate painting, we will be able to distinguish with these two with the help of concepts of applied mathematics. What do we do there? We use a concept of stylometric analysis where the any object is going to be divided into elements and within each element they are going to have a mapping and the same mapping should be available for the other people. So I can say that I have drawn this uh, like that I can cheat people by taking a Ravi Verma painting. But with a mathematical concept, we'll be able to immediately find out that it is not mine. Similarly, for the concept of terrorist attacks, the mathematical ideas are very much useful nowadays. 
they collect the behavioral signatures of the people that is what time they are done that and what day it is and what in which place and uh, like that all these details they collect with regard to people who did the the terror attacks and they collect all those and put it in a computer and they use a, the probability theory and statistical tools to analyze that with the help of this computer and then they are able to predict about the terrorist and when the terrorist attacks is going to happen so it will be very much helpful to the world level okay and uh, when you are going to have submarines formation of submarines and also fighter jets that is for purpose of fighting with opposite people opposite countries for defense problem we are able to use the clocking device this for even for this clocking device for the formation what we do is we use the meta material objects what is this matter material now if you are taking a material and the, the electromagnetic radiation cannot pass or even the rays cannot pass the light cannot pass then we call such type of material as matter material so if you are making objects of submarines and also this jets airplanes with the help of this matter material and if you are using the system called get tp computers then actually in america university liverpool and dr sebastian is doing this and they asked me to join with them so a lot of modeling are done with the help of all these to use the concept of idea of mathematics to um, analyze all the formation of submarines and jets so and uh, for this students will you will be able to feel happy if i am giving the example of harry potter so in the harry potter story what he does he wears a, a cloak that is like a coat he will wear and he will be disappearing so you will be able to see that is he is invisible so in same way if we are our submarines and also fight jets are going to be invisible then that will be very much helpful to our defense ideas so all these things things are done with the idea of applied mathematics and uh, all the present generations they enjoy music and also they enjoy films all these blockbuster movies they use the concept of science and mathematical modeling how they are using see the concept of fishbab what is that is physically based mathematical modeling with that with the help of numerical simulations they use the concept say you, even all of you enjoyed the bahubali movie there the real water flow you are able to enjoy but actually it is not you are not actually touching the water or you are not able to see the real water it is only by the numerical simulation it is done so if the numerical simulation is accurate you will feel the water is really flowing like that so depending on the natural simulation and also fish bam modeling only all these blockbuster movies are taken nowadays so now not only this even to predict your the knee pain that is knee pains and also the heart injuries and head injuries for everything you are using the mathematical modeling so the mainly thing is because sister wanted me to tell in a very brief way uh, all the research scholars please try to understand that all the ideas of applied mathematics when you are going to use that for the application side and when you are applying all those for the real life problem and world problems or even the existing any problem then they, they are only the emerging trends nowadays and all the foreign countries even when i had gone to canada states even for ms projects and me projects they, they are using only the concept of national problem which are not solved they are taking as problems and they are solving so if you are able to do that our country also will be number one in the world and i wish you all the best and i once again thanking sister uh, julie for giving me this wonderful opportunity i once again ask sorry for the interruption because of the disconnection of the current i could not continue at that time i am really sorry for that once again thank you very much and thank you for your patience for this talk thank you sister thank you thank you so much ma'am for delivering the keynote address it was a pleasure to listen to you ma'am thank you so much for taking the pains to deliver it from even from madurai uh, where you are now so even if there was some technical problem we could solve it by god's grace thank you so much ma'am now it is time to move to the first talk first invited talk by reverend dr father joseph kuritra the professor from department of mathematics christ university bengaluru and the director of research of other let me take this time to welcome my dear colleague 
and assistant professor in the department of mathematics anthony john ef sir to introduce reverend dr father joseph and to welcome him to the first invited talk over to you anthony sir good afternoon everybody i would like to introduce today's resource person Reverend Dr. Joseph Varghese. He received MSc degree in mathematics and the MA degree in economics from Madras University and the PhD degree in mathematics from MS University in 2010. He is currently an associate professor with the Department of Mathematics Christ University, Bangalore. He is also Director of Research of Christ University. The thrust area of his research are graph labeling, fuzzy sets, and number theory. He is the author of over 50 articles in the field of mathematics, church history, liturgy, and sports. He has co-edited two books. He is the editor and reviewer of many mathematics journals. So I believe he is a suitable resource person for today's session. On behalf of St. Thomas College, I invite Reverend Dr. Joseph Varghese to handle this session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. Thank you, Dr. Julie and uh, management and staff of St. Thomas College Trishul. It, it's a privilege to be uh, in this webinar to address you all. I did my PhD in the area of uh, decomposition of graphs. While I was doing PhD, I was not much sure about the applications of that. However, once when I started teaching and then started reading materials and then looking into some of the social systems as well as associated matters, I came to know that that decomposition has a vital role to understand the societal structures. One is stratified society or stratification of the society. Both ways, graph structures have a great role to play, especially in decomposition. So here in this national webinar on emerging trends in applied mathematics, amidst this severe pandemic situation, I thought of sharing some of the mathematical models coming from the area of graph theory with you so that this robust area can help many of you, including me, to understand more about epidemics. I titled the talk as Graph Theory and Epidemiology. Epidemiology generally is a study associated with the community medicine. So Jubilee Medical Mission Hospital or Amala or any other hospital doctors might be interested in, even life science people also. But as Dr. Anjali Devi was mentioning, and many other people who are going to discuss with you, mathematical foundations of the study especially the spread of diseases, human born or animal born or spread through community interactions would amount to epidemiology, the study of the various interactions, effect, density, impact of epidemics. 
So graph also has a very interesting role to play here. The very structure graph provides help us to understand what a society, how it stands, as well as people are concerned. Corona means crown. It, it does not become a crown on the cap of each one of us. But then it helps us in contacting many of us. The most important effect of probably Corona is we can be at our homes, still we can learn things. We can be at our home, still we can work. And there is a very strong connectivity, especially thanks to the advancement of computer science, electronics, physics, and of course, mathematics too. Last 20 years, what was developed, what were in the discussion, what were the modeling that was happening, including differential equations, fluid dynamics, and many other areas came to rescue to help us from the area where we are quarantined or we are set alone, left alone, even while being there in our own places, we would be able to connect with other people. In fact, the best analogy we can speak about the Corona virus or the spread of Corona is stay where you are and health and stay healthy as much as possible. In fact, this is the real message of graph theory and epidemiology also. As per the records, especially the Lancet magazine, it is supposed to have originated for the first virus spread or effect, effect, effect would have been happening on the 1st of December 2019, a year and 16 days ago. And then December 8th, the first case was reported, a person with the mnemonic symptoms. Several people were admitted to the hospitals. But by 13th of January, the first fatality that has happened in Thailand, cross border spread of it. And the 16th of January, Japan, they identified the first similar kind of unidentified pneumonia symptoms. Within four days, there was the first case identified in South Korea. Within four or five days, Italy, France, US, Malaysia, and many of the East Asian countries were alerted by this. India, for many reasons, we were happy. We were just reading the news only. Even until February, we were very happy with not being affected. However, there were serious alerts because we were bordering with China. We had strong bilateral relations in many ways, especially in the case of trade. And naturally, and we use a lot of Chinese products. So wherever large concentration of Chinese products, people traveling, and we have several students studying in China and other related areas. So we were also alerted. So this is, in fact, the background regarding how graph is going to come into picture. Because each country can be identified as a vertex, a node, and a country and another country share an edge provided there is a border between them or there is someone moving, especially in the case of large scale movements, not even a, not the smaller movements by ships, by flight or by rail. Large movements are there. Then there is every chance that these movements, this edge can carry this virus in one place to another place. That is what has happened. Unexpectedly, from China, it went to Italy. Italy was worse affected during the first day. So the question always was how different graph structures would be there in recognizing the pandemic because it's country, we are a population of billions then densely populated all over the world and wherever people are there there is every possibility that we have interactions so how to identify these interactions what is the best way in which one person is connected to another person 
is recognized and once when we understand that the structure of the people movements and interactions are known to us either by computer studies or with the help of graph theory then it is easier for administrators to take action these are the nine most important actually tools that are required or the measures that are taken by governments to control epidemic the spread of uh, uh, corona covid 19 cancellation of public events because of natural interaction between people the number of edges are getting more and more closures of public transport especially massive way of transfer of virus happens through public transport system international travel controls in fact this was i tell i show you later later one example where in which when international travel controls were very very strong look at the case of even kerala where the number of virus spread was corona virus spread was epidemic any kind of epidemic spread is very less public information campaigns setting that aside look at the remaining five also restrictions on international internal movements quarantining restrictions on public gatherings public events is one thing public gathering is something else school closures stay at home requirements workplace closures except the fourth one everything has something to do with the network studies fourth one public information campaigns it is educating people who are undergoing this who have to take care of the remaining eight different measures either on one zone behalf or with the instruction especially certain states we are very strong they have stringent measures in stopping this they have taken very strong measures and because of that several countries even now even at this this stage after one year there are several countries as per the who record there is no not even a single case is reported it is because of this measure especially the third one international travel count the moment you come to know there is someone who is affected by that you close the border you you quarant you use make sure that you are not traveling between nobody is traveling between so i i take some of the graph theoretical terminologies which would in fact work as graph models epidemic ep epidemic epidemiological models which would help us or even not necessarily graph theorists even people from other areas can work on and improve the understanding the knowledge of the spread of epidemics or how to control the epidemics so what are the major roles played by graph models any model has this and graph model also specifically to reduce the impact how do we reduce the impact now look at the number of people who are affected who passed away for many reasons and mainly due to this impact of covid in last one year it's it's huge and it might be getting huge also so how to reduce the impact impact in the sense how to separate people even in a fighting situation the normal fights in a football match or something as a referee someone goes in or the all the officials would come and if two people are fighting your team are fighting they just separate them in fact that is the same case here too an interaction between two people or one person affected and other people of and people who are vulnerable emotionally sensitive in the case of football matches or any group games but in this case of insensitive people or people with the like, without proper knowledge or people who are not caring about any of this so it might be through the help of police force or some voluntary assignments or with the help of instructions we reduce the impact by separating them we keeping them away identify the affected this is one important thing because we can we can through a trailing tracking the people who was the person where the person was affected and what was the way in which the person has traveled tra completely trailing the person identifying where all the person has got to whom all we have is these days we were seeing about this hearing about these things make sure that the less number of people are affected that's most important thing the moment you come to know about and especially Kerala was successful in the first three months to make sure that the less number of people are affected. In fact, several people praised the Kerala's efforts in that. But now the situation has completely changed. 
avoid future impacts. This is very important too. Of course, once when you get uh, 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 different uh, vaccines or you get uh, remedies, you, you get immun, Im, immunized, you would not be sometimes safe. But what about the people who are vulnerable, especially people who are having other effects? So can we avoid the future impacts? So how to make sure that system is in place such a way that future impact is going to be less. So these are the four major goals, not necessarily exclusively, but much more are there, which would help us to model properly. And then I would take you through some of the graph theoretical structures, which would help us to identify these uh, four aspects as well as associated aspects. Most important among me is all of us might have heard about bipartition graphs or bipartite graphs. A bipartite graph is a graph where on which the vertices can be partitioned into two. Here, as far as epidemic strategy is concerned, a vertex is supposed to be a person who is prone to or who is already affected by the virus. It need not be a human person. It could be anything that can be caused to spread, spreading it. A, a carrier can be also. Person might not be, but then the person or a thing or animal or anything, whatever, who can be a carrier too. So what we do is we can, even in a structure, physically, if you're not separating, this bipartitioning is something which is, it's by default this happening. People are affected by this and people are not affected by this. People are affected by virus. They can be together. Absolutely, there is no issue generally. People are not affected also can be together. There is no problem in generally interacting. And if this possibility, clear bipartitioning is possible. Keeping all the people, actually what happens in the case of normal disease is also the same thing. We keep all the people who are having some disease in a the hospital. Then people who are not having diseases generally will be outside of the hospital. It's actually partitioning. It is not bipartitioning. There is no single space where in which everybody is. There would be small, small clusters where in which people are treated. So this is, in fact, one of the most important, the basic structure that is available, bipartite graph or bipartitioning of the entire people, the population that are associated with it. So this is a graphical model there that is available. A group of people in blue, not affected, and people who are affected, and the possibility of interaction. How to minimize the interaction between these two groups from macro perspective as well as micro perspective, from a local community as well as international communities. Even when places where, you no, know, we have actually in some of the, uh, let's say, hilly areas or island-like areas in any of the state, they might be getting less chance to have the impact until someone goes there or until someone passes through that space. But even then, as a large body, in their state or in their country can be partitioned. So look at the case of uh, border controls. We had a serious issue at least some years ago, some, some, some weeks ago, until some weeks ago, people to move from Tamil Nadu to Kerala, Kerala to Karnataka, Karnataka to Tamil Nadu, they were very clear controlled mechanisms such a way that nobody is. It is not because just because you are in Kerala, you would be affected by the possibility of interaction can be reduced. And the moment, unless otherwise there is a very clear necessity, you need not travel. That was the instruction given. And there is a necessity also, you take sure that you are not interacting with other people. So this makes sure that you go to some other place with the uh, uh, precautionary measures, you come back to the same place. Even while you come back to avoid all possibilities of uh, interaction, uh, possibilities of uh, spread of the virus, you be quarantined for some time and then you come out of. And this is practice now. In fact, many people say this would have been the situation from the beginning onwards. However, at present, this is what is happening. But uh, imagine April, May, uh, March, April, May, it was a very severe uh, stoppage on the borders. Even sometimes, some cases you would see in locality, you are not supposed to go. At home, you are supposed to be staying. You are not supposed to go out. So this is a large 
our small macro as well as micro way of separating people into two groups people affected and people non affected now look at the measures what is the number of people affected there population number of people non affected there so affected people we can again group them into multiple or partition them again to cluster them into smaller smaller groups or larger ones depending on age depending on their prehistory their the 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 pre medical records or depending on vulnerabilities to certain situations allergy and other things or their uh, uh, other diseases or their habits many things can be identified and they can be again uh, grouped so that is with regard to affected people whereas in non affected people there is no much restriction that is required there in spite of that people who are prone to be lying or prone to be moving prone to be uh, un uncontrollable they can be always on the watch make sure that there will not be especially people who have habits of smoke smoking uh, drugs or alcohol they tend to be moving out they cannot stay at home so what they do is they they you know can actually invite dangers so this was actually um, in fact in the case of affected people uh, at least a minimal way we can do and uh, in non affected people and affected people definitely um, especially you look at the situation what has happened in italy um, there was no much enough mechanism those days but now it is all changed uh, where senior people there was no information that was available medical study was not there uh, that much robust those days where in which people who are elderly may be severely affected that guess was not the moment many people started dying only they came to know so the moment you come to know about that we came to know about it now there is always a severe uh, support mechanism that is given to people who are elderly and people who are in the younger stages less measures are especially even some of the european countries even primary schools and even uh, even nurseries as well as primary school they opened it because they might be leastly affected there is a similar to partition graph by partite graph there is something called split graph and in fact this is very useful for uh, quarantining systems a uh, split graph is a graph where in which the vertex set can be split into by partitioned in two but with one additional condition that one of the partite sets everyone is associated with everybody else every possibility that they can move between them. but the other group it's completely independent nobody is supposed to move connect with each other so it's almost like a situation towards the right hand side we can see it's actually uh, completely independent vertices independent people or independent things they are quarantined individually in isolation they are kept such a way that they would never interact with anybody but there is a very possibility that they could have been interacting with someone here in the other group could have been interacting so those people we trail and then we identify whether they should be taken up but on the left hand side we can see community where in which nobody is affected there can be possibilities of effect but that means it's supposed to be a complete graph where every node is associated every uh, node is uh, adjacent to every other, everything else but look at there also the the graph model helps us in identifying the situation in such a way that one group is completely isolated the other group is potentially connected and it in such a case the the advantage is in a split graph the advantage is this isolated people can easily be uh, uh, cured or easily be helped whereas in the second situation where the complete graph where in which everybody is uh, connected to everybody everybody is prone to be connected to each other chances are high that a single spread single uh, uh, affect can affect a simple identification of a disease or, or some kind of uh, symptoms can uh, jeopardize the whole area so it is uh, but as far as quarantine is concerned this is technically the model uh, quarantine model is split graph model only where in which everybody is isolated separately and they would not be uh, interact the other group is set free in, in fact other other epidemic study not just corona alone other groups other epidemic studies also the epidemiology studies also the same thing happens whoever is quarantined they would be taken to some asylums or some uh, uh, quarantine places 
or isolation wards and then they would be kept especially in the case of you would see in the case of uh, mentally retarded people or sorry not retarded people uh, uh, people who have have some mental problems so you would be kept uh, separately and they would not be interacting in fact uh, we reach such a situation that we started suspecting everybody who is affected by this or is prone to be we want everybody to be alienated in fact some of the in the beginning days even in the entire world was fearing the people who are affected or prone to be affected and they were treating them as people with mental sickness or other serious sickness another model is hypergraph model hypergraphs are graphs which are slightly different from it's a generalized graph where in which it's clusters that are mattering it is not pairs that are mattering in the case of all other graphs we look at people um, just one node is one person is prone to be adjacent to another person at a time whereas in the case of hypergraph models you would see a situation where in which a group is completely connected to each other so you can, you can see several several groups in this one famous grouping is that is why in the nine points which i mentioned public gatherings and public meetings or schools closure of schools school in the entire community if you look at as a hypergraph let's say trishur city or kerala in delhi all the people who are going to a particular college would be one particular edge and from them some out would be going to their family so a family would become another edge all the people are going to church a particular church a, a, a physical church they would be one community one group so we have in a in a hypergraph we call it as edge so we have multiple edges here in such a way that different types of edges here small and large edges such a way that edge is not a single line connectivity where in which a group of people and there would be plenty of overlapping also and this overlapping is a serious concern how to minimize this overlapping even if there is an overlapping can you make them a separate entity if there is an overlap in such a case we are winning actually hypergraph models are very useful as far as epidemiological studies are concerned we make sure we be make it a point that identifying clusters wherever one person goes so i am associated with the multiple groups i am from my family i am from my caste my religion my school my college my my uh, uh, club my sports team different different groups i am associated with in a group so same group multiple people are there with the multiple connections and then you identify all such possible connections if there is an alien alienated thing there is no way at all this pe people would never interact with other group then we are through with but in case this particular edges hyper edges we call it hyper edges if they are actually prone to be associated with or there is a vertex in an edge that is part of many other edges it's a serious concern so how to reduce the number the minimization of that would uh, help us to understand the defect of uh, or the effect of uh, the epidemiology the spread of epidemics so hypergraphs if you can program if you can model the community the model the society or a particular locality as a hypergraph then exactly identify with respect to the connections the possible number of connections we have to identify all the variables associated with that as i was mentioning variables includes your team your your sports team your uh, 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 clubs your 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 religion your uh, friendship friendship circle school or college education institution workplace then your relatives many different ways you can it can be identified so you would be identified with the, your degrees the number of possible interaction with other group and all this become and you would be part of you look at this itself the red edge the uh, there is a single vertex that is in the intersection of red and blue edge blue edge contains 3 and red edge contains uh, 3 plus 2 5 in fact the red one contains maximum number of vertices here in fact they have interaction with many other groups here three or four different three different edges are coming into that so people who are in the same edge they are adjacent to each other they are they are there available they, they can be in a vulnerable situation so as far as modeling is concerned the model expectation is to clearly earmark 
the edges available there and see which are the vertices that are having maximum degrees more and more degrees they are left alone we can separate them so even in a smaller edge we can partition them and see leastly affected least affected people and maximally affected people so that is one model that is available another modeling is possible with the help of signed graphs signed graph many of you are aware of it's a graph it's an ordinary graph with an additional property known as signature every edge is assigned any of the two signs plus or minus so minus sign signifies that there is a negative tendency or there is a negative approach between two vertices. Uh, they are negatively connected. They are not in good terms. Whereas positive says that they are in good terms. Two people are in good terms, a good relationship. However, in our case, we can model it as not they are good or bad. Of course, that can be an underlying graph. People, I am having symptoms of Corona. Therefore, everybody around me would be vulnerable. We can give them as negative edges. But as strong as you are, you cannot pass this virus to anybody else. You completely devoid of that then between you and the other person can be given positive edges so this in this particular case i've taken some vertices here and the red edges are vulnerable edges and green edges are uh, acceptable edges where there is no possibility at all so between two people if there is a red edge that signature is of course minus and plus could have been given instead of i given red and green green says that Okay, there is no issue between them. There is no possibility that they can be interacted. So one best case is the case where in which you interact with that person always with a mask. When you interact with another person with always a mask, there is chanceless. You always are at a, you two are at a distance of six feet. Absolutely, there is no issue. But when you go with another person, you always have interaction. For example, I don't know, the pointer is here. No, okay, I look at this. Um, mm, left hand side, uh, the, the central vertex that is available there. Um, if that person is in the family, when you interact with another person in the family, normally we don't use the mask. But once when you're outside of the family, outside of home, we interact with another person, we always use the mask. So whenever we are mask, using the mask, ideal thing people say, doctors used to say is wear mask always. Of course, online uh, discussion, there is no requirement and nobody's around. Even the, among the family members, when you are interacting with, that is what the ideal situation they say, wear mask always. That is a predominant, actually, then wash your hands. Of course, two measures that people say. Keeping a distance is one thing, good thing. But then apart from this, or the most important thing WHO mandates, you wear a mask that makes sure that you are not spreading and you are not getting. Second thing is wash your hands. So. Wearing a mask could be identified modeled in this manner. If you are interacting with another person, always with the wearing a mask, then between you, the the the, the edges is, is plus that is a green here. And if you are not interacting with anyone of you, not just both, anyone of you is not interacting with the uh, mask worn mask or face cover or uh, uh, head cover or anything, then you between you the edge is uh, green. In fact, you are not contacting with anybody. There is no edge at all. You are contacting another person, but between you, there is a mask. Both of you are wearing mask. It is green. And if both of you are not wearing a mask, it is identified as uh, red. And the signed graph, plenty of uh, uh, beautiful concepts are available. The most important among them is frustration index. Frustration index is in such a way that um, you make the graph with the remove the least number of edges negative edges you remove such a way that the graph becomes a balanced graph what is a balanced graph balanced graph is a graph where in which every cycle has even number of 
negative edges. So if all are having positive, we are through with a well perfectly balanced graph, balanced graph. That is without any sign. Even if there is a sign, when you interact with your group alone, you need to have this easy decision. So that can be always modeled as, as in the case of hypergraph, I was mentioning, affected people and the remaining one affect non-affected people. So this has a wider uh, impact, wider application signed the graph. Uh, many much many many studies have not come at all, but it's it's worth exploring with this perspective. Uh, the idea is plus is there or green is there when between you you always interact with uh, ma wearing mask, and all other cases where in which red is coming, I, any one of you at least is not wearing the mask or both of you are not in, you are wearing the mask. This is a 1970 model, one of the oldest models as far as uh, modern uh, data analysis is concerned or data sciences or network studies are concerned. Serious uh, uh, study of networks in the case of uh, uh, with the help of graph theory. Uh, Wayne Sakari, he did a, a beautiful study with uh, a karate club. A karate club had a, um, a manager and an instructor where in which um, um, there were several people, uh, uh, the students who were learning. And this there was a point of time, ego clash was a between manager and instructor. They split. A single highly interactive group splits into two. Karate, they come together and they interact always. They have a body interaction. They have a other, you know, the body touches because of the karate practices under the thing, like football or any other team. It so happened that these people started fighting and they took a good number of people. A manager took some people out and the remaining people instructed took out. And a manager found out a new instructor and instructor found a new manager. And they started working as different groups. This Wayne Sakari, two years, he studied, observed this one and identified there is a possibility of poaching people. So manager he wanted to take because already some people were studying there. So he wanted to bring in some people here. Instructor, he wanted to bring in some people from the other group because both of them they are together. Students did not have karate, students did not have any problem with the manager and instructor. Only they themselves have an issue. But the issue is under the watch of instructor, they cannot go. Under the watch of admin, manager, they cannot, the people cannot go. So the problem is how do we identify vulnerable people? And this was modeled actually. Uh, in fact, this is very interesting as far as uh, the recent, uh, uh, today is actually the election day or so the results day in Kerala. I remember some of some days ago, there was a split in uh, Kerala Congress. Uh, every political party, this happens. A uh, Kerala Congress where Joseph versus Joe's. And in fact, uh, for some time at a time, both the people were trying to get as many number of secretaries and as many workers as possible. But under the watch of person, it is not possible. You will imagine some of the cases in Maharashtra and other places where Karnataka and other places where they had this MLS were taken to resorts. They were keeping it there. It is in fact the same model only here. Two groups are working, opposite party as well as ruling party. And you keep your MLS with you, you keep your MBs with you, other person with the other. And we cannot go out. But we know vulnerable people. So in fact, Wayne Sakari was able to predict almost near perfectly how many people he used an algorithm known as max flow mingut theorem mingut uh, algorithm so you might have studied in graph theory if not it is the the maximum flow is happening through the minimum cut of the uh, vertex set of the graph so in, in fact very interesting uh, work out that is uh, very usefully uh, very effectively used in many other areas also this uh, a karate graph or karate club uh, model in fact, he comes to rescue here as well, as far as graph theory is concerned, as far as pandemic is concerned. In pandemic studies, what we look at is people, it is not, we are quarantining a group of people, the other group is not quarantined. They are freely moving. But it's always impossible for, or we have to make sure that it is impossible for a person who is affected, already contracted or COVID positive, does not go there. And reverse also. But we can identify vulnerable people. As I was mentioning earlier, the split graph. We can identify the vulnerable people. Once the vulnerable people are identified, easily if you have a watch on them, the state or the volunteering group definitely can make 
huge advancement as far as stoppage of the spread of virus is concerned. Affected and non-affected people who can be in the same case here too. Uh, uh, this is one group splitting. The entire team was a single team as far as the Karata club. Now one group went. Corona brought another one group into it. And then uh, people who are not brought will become the remaining group. Now the question is who would be well, prone to this and who would be uh, prone to get interacted with the other group. So identifying some those people is very important and that is uh, affected through uh, that is that can be understood with the help of the Sakari's uh, karate club model. A graph is also known as sometimes a community provided it has got some specialities. Community, you know, it's, it's a technical term actually in network theory, it's a technical term, community. Uh, we can see the example what is shown earlier the graph, you know, hypergraphs. Community is actually, in fact, this is very useful. Each group is densely connected. That is the idea of community. Each group is densely connected. Look at this situation itself. Uh, when there is a cluster there, they are densely connected. That group with the other one, with one or two. If two are there, then there is a possibility. I don't know if there is any condition. The two people, two at least are sharing the same edges. Now it is not aware. So, but between them, they are very strongly connected. Now, um, probably many of you know, these are the only countries, as per the WHO records today, there are no virus cases, COVID-19 COVID cases. Not even a single case was reported in all these cases. There is a speciality as far as these countries are concerned. Except the last one, everything else is a, an island. Except the last, North Korea is not an island, but remaining. So as I was mentioning, it was easier for them to have border control. The moment they came to know about the virus, they made sure that nobody is going out, nobody is coming in also. Even otherwise, also many of these countries are self, self in a, in a, uh, very small countries. Easily we can easily they can manage themselves, and they they are with the normal understand normal in their resources they manage themselves. There is no much uh, serious requirement of going like our like Shadi and other places. No, there is no not going outside. But North Korea, compared to any state in the world, probably they have the the strongest uh, administrative setup as far as their people are under very clear directions, uh, instructions of the government. Whether fear or favor, they are completely uh, respecting the people, supposed to be completely respecting the governmental instructions. So they are very clear. And that is one country where in which as a large country, among the large countries, one country where they have least number of interaction with other countries. In fact, it helped them now. I don't know what the democratic situation there that is happening. Forget about that. But it helped them a lot. It helped them in such a way that they could immediately implement these border controls. The moment they had border, even with South Korea, they don't have much uh, strong connections. <clears throat> Otherwise, the only connection is with North Korea. In fact, they had, uh, uh, sorry, uh, with China. In fact, North Korea, uh, one of the first instances itself, South Korea had issue with the, this virus, whereas North Korea is not reporting anything. It might be, we let us, let us trust them. No. It is because of the clear condition. Look at this. Each group is densely connected. So it is a large world network wherein which these groups are densely connected and completely isolated. Since they are isolated, it was easier. Virus would not emerge from every nook and corner. It is only through the spread. One virus, then the virus is spread. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, multiplied and it is it's spread to different parts from the original source. It is not created anywhere. Very, very. Like, same as human population also. No, how we created, we, we became. It is not each and every place there is some creation that has happened. There is one, people generally attribute to one father, one parent. So it's same case here too. So yeah, virus also has one father, one parent system or one mother, one parent system. There it was spreading and the, these people could stop it. So this model is very interesting model, community model. Community is a 
model where in which a graph where in which each group is densely, each collection of vertices is densely connected. And in this case, the moment if we can identify communities or e.g. smaller groups, virus spread can be easily identified. Now we are in a, look at the situation. As I was showing you the number, um, within two months, virus was identified as, this coronavirus was identified as a global uh, uh, troublemaker. That is mainly because we are in a small world. It is not that whole world where in which we are at a far distance, far away from each other. We are in a very small world. Uh, at least in the 1930s, people started thinking about this concept when the uh, transportation, especially flights were moving between or the ships were moving between massive transportation, fast and massive transportation happening between countries. People identified that we do not require actually too much connections to reach another person. Any person here, those are attending like a conference here, or anybody in the world can be connected to anybody else with the maximum five intermediaries. With the sixth person, you can reach that. That is to say that if you want to connection with the Imran Khan, who is the Prime Minister of Pakistan, of course, we have read about him in the newspaper. No. Can you pass a courier? Can, can you pass a gift to him? Other than the sending by post, through the knowledge connections, you want to transfer it secretly. In fact, this has happened in the case of gold smuggle. This happens in the case of currency smuggle. Black money. I have shown you this black this is mainly because of the black money. What they do is they transfer to one person who is trustworthy from there to another person who is again trustworthy, finally reaches the destination. We do not require, it says, theory says that we do not require more people for connections. We just need maximum of six people only. That is why it is not a six degree separator. There are plenty of uh, concepts studied on this network theory as well as uh, logistics in management, even operations research. This six degrees of separation is studied. And what we can uh, probably look at is um, how fast it has reached uh, Europe as well as America from China. A, 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 until then, not known place known as Wuhan is became a, a center of attraction. The epicenter of this particular uh, epidemic was Wuhan. And from there, you identified that we do not recover that much time. It is just two months, less than two months. Likes and likes of people were killed because of this. You can easily send messages. This is to say that a courier that was going from Wuhan with the transferred with the help of maximum six people anywhere in the US, you can deposit. So this is actually a serious concern as far as a planning of defense is concerned. We can transfer, they say, with the secret transfers, we can transfer vital bio weapons, even other weapons or bombs and other planting and other things. You can run smuggling. These are negative ways of doing. Positive ways of thing is we can always identify anybody else in the world with the help of our connection people. So I I am a relative of another person. I am a friend of another person. My friends, friends, friends like that know what is happening in the case of social work networks, especially WhatsApp and other thing or Facebook. Each person is within six connections, and that would help us to identify as this world as a very small world. And that would help us also to understand the world is going to be seriously affected if you are not taking enough measures as far as any kind of this type of any kind of epidemic is concerned. Um, a very two very important probably uh, counts and uh, the measures parameters that are used in case of. Uh, 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 network studies, especially this kind of uh, epidemiological studies, as far as the graph theory connected ones are concerned, modularity. Modularity is a measure of flexibility. It is the measure of a system's components. System's components may be separated and recombined. You can quarantine in one group and you can release them. How fast you can do this kind of activities? It is not as modularity. The measure of is a degree of uh, systems, components, may be 
separated and recombined. It is flexibility, the measure of flexibility. There is another concept known as betweenness. The betweenness. The betweenness again in network study. I am in I am a vertex, and and I have another vertex in the graph and another node in the graph. The number of shortest paths from all pairs of vertices in the graph that pass through the vertex. I am a vertex. So how many people are moving? How many travels are there? Especially junctions, cities, where in which massive transfer, especially Hong Kong. Hong Kong was one place where this was affected. Many people suspect. Or uh, London, or the uh, the big, biggest flight destinations like Dubai, where in which people from all over the world come. So betweenness is the number of shortest paths from all possible pairs of the vertices in the graph that pass through that particular vertex. It is the betweenness of that vertex. So this is the betweenness is more the more vulnerable is that particular person or thing. So you have people traveling through visiting you. That is why hotels were supposed not to be closed, uh, opened. Hotels were also stopped. Trains were closed. Mavsi transport systems. Coloring is another area. Uh, how many more minutes can I take? Can I take 10 more minutes? Hello. Yeah. Coloring is another modeling that is available, graph coloring or vertex coloring. Uh, coloring is, in fact, uh, uh, a kind of labeling wherein which colors are given to the or labels, uh, labeled, uh, vertices are labeled with the case of some colors. Um, we color the vertices or the label the vertices some conditions. That conditions, in fact, would help us to understand how effectively we can group people. There is a, the famous coloring is known as proper coloring. In proper coloring, it is mentioned that people who are adjacent should not get the, the neighbors should not get the same color. You clearly identify person who are nearby. So people are prone to this uh, uh, disease. They are marked actually with the different, different colors, different numbers. So how do we identify? We can partition the entire network into classes where in which depending on the so people who are not interaction with each other will come together and each vertex in a particular class would be independent so that is a large structure that can be available and this quarantine can be effected with the help of that properly labeling them in fact Domination is one another area where in which you can use this coloring as well as who is affecting what. Look at there is uh, you know the study of domination very clearly distinguishes same as in the bipartition which I was mentioning earlier. A graph is separated into two pieces such a way that a dominating vertex has someone who is always adjacent to someone in the non-dominating set. For that reason, a dominating set is always a, a, a non-dominating set also becomes dominate, dominating set because, because of this very particular condition. So if you if a dominating structure is very small, you have to be seriously concerned. You remember some of the incidents in Kerala, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, there was a person who was traveling everywhere and spreading or moving to all the places within a couple of days. That particular situation is known as domination number is very less. The domination number is very less. That is why people are supposed not to go to persons who are actually leading. For example, in the case of churches or monasteries or temples to the priests and pujaris and other places where large gathering would come there and it can because one person or few people are dominating the entire society. In such a case, that would be worse, that would be seriously affected. We have to destabilize in such a way, in such a way that this domination number has to be increased. The maximum, the domination number, the better the society is as far as this pandemic study is concerned. So there is another type of domination, which is with the help, we can model with the help of people who are clean, in the sense they will not have any effect of, they have not, they are not open to at all. There are people who are probably going to be affected. There is affected people 
and then medical resources medical supporting people doctors nurses and uh, supporting staff so this clean people we can name the label them as cpam there is a famous adaptation of a domination on us um, uh, roman domination a particular type of domination roman domination that is a graph theoretical terminology um, we uh, label the vertices with uh, this label c p a and m and label in such a way that the affected people a would be always whichever is the number whatever is the number of affected people each of the person who is affected is adjacent to a medical person remaining could be anything sometimes you can put it as a is 0 c is 1 2 is 2 p is 2 and m is 3 so labeling the vertices graph in such a way that with in the adjacency in the neighborhood of 0 there should be at least 1 3 is available in the adjacency of an affected person, there is some medical facility that is available there. So what is the least number of such medical facility that is required? That will help the people, help the uh, society, uh, especially the, the governments to minimize, optimize the resources. Otherwise, it is impossible for us to have doctor for everybody and doctor for everyone uh, who is actually uh, affected. So. It is the minimum number that is required. So we can have a single vertex, something like dominating medical officer with the multiple people with the zeros. And that would help. So roughly this is uh, idea where to the A, that affected person, at least one medical officer. And this would, uh, it's an emerging area of study, Roman domination, of course, it just started a little while ago. But Roman definition has very good impact, very good application in the case of uh, epidemiologist care studies thank you so much for the uh, patient listening um, I'm, I'm i'm signing off now in case you have some questions you can ask i'm not given any mathematical formulations here numbers formulas and other things i do not want that i'm just telling that so much of scope is available in graph theory where in which we can extend that to epidemiological studies in the case of this as far as these five properties are concerned reduce the impact, identify the affected people, make sure that the less number of people are affected and avoid future impacts. Thank you. Um, thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Here it is time to clear up your doubts or for any clarifications. Till now, we haven't got any questions, Father. Your talk was very nice it seems all have understood the concepts some new concepts we are dealing with any questions you can please uh, type in the chat box no questions it seems so i hope it is time to thank father joseph uh, dear reverend dr father joseph burgis and uh, dear participants here it is time to thank Dr. Father Joseph uh, for his uh, nearly uh, one hour talk on uh, graphs. Here, I am so happy to note that uh, his session was truly informative and something which is of applied mathematics. I just remembered my MPhil days when I was doing some research in graph theory and later I shifted to fluid dynamics field. So on behalf of the faculty, and uh, St. Thomas College, uh, Trishur, I would like to uh, record our immense gratitude for Reverend Dr. Joseph Vergis for his valuable time and precious sharing of new ideas, especially regarding some applications of graph theory, including this corona issue like that, uh, some direct examples father was telling. It was very informative. And I hope uh, all the students and the faculties and uh, research scholars have benefited from certain ideas like this. And here we have uh, all the people who are watching. They have sent their greetings uh, to father also, it seems, uh, from our department, especially from our OSA members who was here for a time. So they were happy to see Father Joseph on screen again. They have wrote to me personally. So thanks a lot, uh, dear loving Father, for receiving uh, our invitation and to be with us, uh, spending your valuable 
time with us and invoking to us uh, to the new fields of the applied mathematics and graph theory, the recent trends. I hope all you have enjoyed the session well. And now I would like to thank uh, all the faculty members here on the uh, uh, in the in the this live stream sessions, especially my dear HOD sir and uh, all the faculty members here, uh, our team, and also all my students who are so enthusiastic to listen to some topics in graph theory, even from uh, chemistry, statistics background students were there to listen to that father. It was uh, really an eye opener to all of us that something related to this uh, COVID issues like that also you're trying to do in uh, regards of graphs. So thank you so much, uh, dear father, and all of you who are present here. Now uh, we are just uh, officially winding up in this uh, StreamYard uh, live stream. And we are going for the paper presentation sessions, which are going to be held at 4 PM. So uh, uh, for here, I'm just uh, making a short note. And uh, we are concluding this session. And paper presentation sessions will be starting at 4 o'clock. And the link will be put in the uh, general group of national webinar group which we have made after your registration so please be in time at four itself it will start and dr paul i6 will be heading the session so all the best wishes for the next uh, two days and uh, for the eagerly awaited paper presentation sessions thank you so much uh, and uh, let me remain a very nice evening to all of you